With the UN-led climate talks underway in Brazil, the focus is not only on cleaner energy and greener cities, but also on the hidden environmental cost of our digital lives. Now, behind every swipe, every stream, an AI query is a growing carbon footprint. Now, tech experts say part of the solution may lie in the way we write the software itself. CNA Zella Silvaraji explains. Every click, every search, every AI request may seem small, but it all adds up, consuming electricity and generating carbon emissions. From the apps we use to the server storing our data, the digital world is leaving a growing environmental footprint. Developers are exploring ways to reduce this impact through something known as green coding. On the most basic level, we're thinking of how much data we consume um, by our software that we produce, by our websites, by our mobile applications, and then being able to very reliably connect that to a singular server, using a power meter to measure how much energy is being drawn, and then looking at where you buy your energy from. From the individual level, we're thinking of how can we write less code where possible. I think reduction is always up there, number one, right? Sometimes we overcomplicate things and that's really not necessary. On a corporate level, it's also when you think of green coding, how can we institutionalize this as a best practice? Because corporates institutionalize things like um, redundancy, cyber safety, but not uh, ESG principles in coding yet. Green coding isn't just a technical trend. It needs to be embedded into how companies develop software. Just as businesses follow rules for cybersecurity or system backups, experts say environmental responsibility should become a standard practice in software development. If they have a legacy system, then there are some <clears throat> challenges here, which could be daunting and expensive here because to retrain the entire model fully is a very expensive task. At the same time, there are some methodologies which if we talk on the lines of green coding, so post the training, they can do something called pruning, only a specific part or specific parameters of the model need to be retrained so that in this case the efficiency goes up. A lot of these players that well have data centers as well thrive off greater data usage. So if you use more data, it is more likely for them to get higher revenue, higher profit as a result. So, well, it may not be in the interest to tell you, hey, you're using excessive data, or you should cut down on data usage. Governments and regulators are stepping in as well. Singapore and the EU are drafting sustainability standards for digital services, while researchers push for an AI carbon registry to track the environmental cost of algorithms. You hear about digital transformation as the driving force, very much like how it was in Singapore 10, 20 years ago. So with rapid digital transformation across all areas, there is the chance to either get it right or to get it very wrong. And this is a term we call sustainable digital transformation, whereby when we transform digitally, can we write the base layer of code using low carbon computer code and ensure that in the years that come by, we're using a green foundational base? Or are we going to go the ways of the past, whereby we did things, well, not as green, and uh, we're paying the price right now. And Ella joins us in the studio this morning, right now. So, so Ella, this this sounds like you know companies that used to, and I, th I think some of them still do. They have all these sustainable tuna, you know, on the labels. So I'm thinking in my head, one day we'll see this app was written using solar power, right? And also feels as though this is something only for big tech. Do we do we have a role, the small person like I am, when it comes to to green coding? I mean, that's a great question, you know. That's one thing we all struggle because we listen to this, we hear about this, we understand it, but unless it really impacts us individually, we are not able to act upon it, mm -hmm. right? It's simply and very understandably so. But 
what would you all tell me if I say, have you all checked how many unread emails or WhatsApp messages do you all have? Have you all ever looked at it? Too many, according too many, to the right? boss. Right? Yeah, you know. and I honestly wouldn't bother too much yeah. with it. But I, for one, did check after these interviews and I had about more than 10,000 unread emails right. in our Gmail. <laughs> and all this coming from, you know, marketing emails, right. subscriptions <laughs> for shopping or brands and, and stuff like that. And... Just to give you all a context, a simple thank you email can weigh between, you know, can, can contribute between three to five grams of carbon dioxide. Right. Sounds small, sounds small. But then you add a GIF, add a photo, or make it into a larger attachment and it becomes 50 grams. Multiply this across those thousands and thousands of emails that, you know, goes in and out every single day, not just in Singapore, not just in Mediacorp, but across the world. It, all of us are quietly responsible for a couple of tons of carbon. Wow. And that's really okay. shocking. So, Stop thanking people. Yeah, in your absolutely. Emails. Yeah, yeah. Do, or, or stop should, sending emails. <laughs> we should forgive you for not replying. Okay. And, and, and on the same <laughs> note, um, streaming also matters, right? Sometimes we like to watch videos or listen to music, um, maybe on YouTube. But what what happens is when you load a video and just listen to it, the audio, the, the video is still running at the background, mm. and that consumes energy. So the instant green solution would be just use an audio streaming app. For, for that matter, okay. right? So finding alternate solutions, quick ones, is, is just a couple mm, of examples there. Okay. Right, and I understand that companies can save energy by writing more efficient code, uh, but how does that actually work? Do you have any real-world examples for us to try to picture this? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, efficient code really works by making computers do less pointless works. And when I say pointless, means, you know, uh, running lesser iterations of, of those coding, fewer loops, cleaner algorithms, making it more smarter and saving time in that sense. And it's already happening. You know, Microsoft's Carbon Aware SDK is it's actually shifting workloads to times where there are more cleaner energy that's available. And which means to say the same task produces less energy or less carbon in that sense. And Google's ultra-efficient uh, data centers, they are also you know, using smarter AI softwares, mm. optimizing their outputs as well. So far more work is coming out of the same amount of electricity. So these are the you know green code. When it comes to green code, it really isn't really futuristic, but it's really quietly powering the internet right now. Yeah, it's true because AI is everywhere now. You know, you've got chatbots, search. And so how does this green code help us use AI in a more sustainable way? You know, when it comes to a, an email, for example, uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult or easy, you might say. It depends on the user, it depends mm. on the company to k kind of like look into it. But when you, when you talk about green AI, it means really building and running these uh, efficiently, like I said. You need to have smarter tech, you need to optimise the usages, the output, everything matters. And really to put into perspective, like a single large AI model, it can produce as much as uh, carbon as five cars over their entire lifetime. Right. And that's huge amount of, you know, footprint that we're speaking right here. Efficient models, smarter training, renewable energy uh, powered instead of fossil fuels. Okay. We need to rethink, you know, the entire, we everything we're yeah. doing, right? And how, so audio, yeah. more so than video. Hmm. And stop saying thank you in email. <laughs> Don't yeah. reply all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cut all communications. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best way. Stop. <laughs> okay. Ella, thank you so much. Thank you so Appreciate much. Appreciate you coming on the show this morning. Thank you.